The state doesn't care what parents want for their children, dismisses it. And so you get things that I think in future years, people look back and say, well, that's barbarism, what you inflict on children. The raging debate in America, and we see a lot of echoes of it in Australia, and I'm sure you do in Britain, about the degree to which parents should have the right to determine what their children are taught. Yeah. And the state intervening. It's extraordinary, isn't it? You know, it is to me. Yeah, yeah. And we'll look at that's the second part of it. Um, I, actually, uh, when the state first intervened in education in this country, it, it did a little bit from 1833 onwards, but primarily it intervened from 1870 onwards. And there were numerous, there, 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 was, there were surveys, but there was a very powerful survey called the Newcastle Commission Report, named, named after Lord Newcastle. It was published in 1861, I think, did the survey in 1858. And it found that the vast majority of children were in school, um, 95% or something like that, um, for, I think it's about six years, 5.7 years. And some of these, uh, you know, a lot of these parents were, of course, sending their children to um, church schools. A lot of the very poor were in the ragged, in the philanthropic philanthropic schools. Lord Shaftesbury's work, I think. Exactly. But there was also this category of for-profit schools. That was the right. category that was there. And those were sort of low-cost private schools set up as initiatives. But why I mentioned this in this context was the commissioners, you know, the good and the great of Victorian England, and I'm sure they were good and great and well-meaning, they couldn't understand why parents were sending their children to these for-profit schools rather than the church schools and so on. And they, they wrote disparagingly about these poor parents who know nothing. They want to be in control. They want accountability. They want their children to be learning the things that will get them work, not the things they can learn in Sunday school. And they're going to Sunday school anyway, or going to church. And it was, it's, it's, I, I, I wish I had the quotes for you, but they're very, it's very interesting the way these good and the great didn't understand, even back in 1870, 1860, why poor parents would want control. And fast forward to what you've just said. Now, it's a disgrace. You know, schools, state schools, governments got involved with education in loco parentis. That was, that was the phase. Only we're doing it because parents need to work, parents are doing other things. And so we are acting in the role, in, you know, for the parents. And slowly, you, you know, the whole thing about, about the role of the state is, as you know, I mean, and it can be explained in various ways, but once you give a little bit of control to the state, it gets more and more control, more and more control, the institutional bias will lead to the sort of thing you described in America, the sort of thing we're seeing in Australia and England, and uh, this is, this is yeah. very interesting, you see. Um, Frank Ferruti talks about the emergence of an expertocracy, mm. you know, a sort of um, elite that thinks they know best. Yes. And weak governments, high turnover of ministers, cabinets not in control, all of that sort of stuff. They say, well, we know how to run the place anyway, and so it doesn't matter who's actually in the halls of power any given day. We'll run the place. So you're saying right back in the you know, late uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, 1850s, 1860, yeah, Newcastle yeah. Report, yeah. you had people then saying they know better. See, one of the things I yeah. learned in yeah. 20 years in public life yeah. was never, never equate education and even intelligence with wisdom. Mm. You'd meet people in the back blocks, as we call it in Australia, yeah. Yeah. who were as wise as any academic I ever met. Yeah. And, and they see the importance of ensuring their kids are given the tools with which yes. to think and yes. learn, yes. but not told what's right and wrong by a bureaucrat. That's for mum and dad. Yeah. And if mum and dad want to seek advice, of course they can. You know, if, if there was a, a, a liberated system of education outside of the state, mm. of course there would be which mm. education. There would be mm. guides to you know, how to educate best, where to go, what, to, mm. what facilities to use, what resources. So, you know, it's not saying that mum and dad don't need advice or don't benefit from it, but they can talk to their, their siblings, their parents, their, you know, everyone can come in with that advice. You don't need the state to come in. Yeah, an expertocracy, I suppose that's valid. That's a useful phrase. But I, that's in a sense, yeah, is there a conspiracy or is this just a, 
a gross thing that's emerged because you've given power at one stage to people and their power. You know, people like to expand power, don't they? And bureaucrats are the same as anyone else. They want it's to a great battle in democracies yeah, to make yeah. certain that the power doesn't end up in the wrong place, that yeah. governments are downstream of culture. Yeah. Yeah, I think.